Hey guys, it's Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today I have the brand new DJI Aveda, Avatar, Avada. I wanna give you my first impressions on the specs and kinda of show you what you might be getting if you upgrade from the first version. Let's jump right into it. So I just got this kit in the mail. I think it was announced today. This is the Avatar 2 Fly More Combo. It comes with the drone itself. It comes with the brand new Goggles 3 and it comes with the RC Motion 3 remote. Now this kit also comes with three batteries, a charging hub, some props, a bag, and some other accessories as well. The price on this kit is right at $1,200, but if you were to buy this without the three batteries and just get a single battery, I think that's pricing in right at $1,000. Now I also have the brand new DJI Remote Controller 3. I can tell you from playing around with this just a little bit that I think I'm gonna prefer this remote way better than the RC controller. This feels very unnatural to me. I feel like the, uh, the tracking on this is very, very strange. I'm not used to where all the buttons are. This just feels more like what I'm used to with a drone. That being said, I, believe it or not, have never owned a drone. I've never flown a drone. And so for this first video, I just wanna go through some of the features that differentiate the Avada 2 from the Avada 1. So we're gonna talk a lot about specs and some of the advantages and disadvantages. But in a future video, I'm going to try to show you some of the frustrations that I've had setting this up. Installing of the firmware failed. I hit the record button, recording, camera failed. I'm not connected anymore. What is going on here? We connected or not connected? I don't even know. Now it's reconnecting to the goggles, holy sh aircraft processor overheated. It's not even doing anything. It's just sitting here on my desk. Whoa, shit, shit, shit. I'm about to like chop my hand off. Woo, that is hot. I feel like I just almost burned myself. If you've followed our YouTube channel over the years, or if you've downloaded any of our photography tutorials, especially those from Ali Licardi's Photographing the World series, you know that we've captured some amazing drone footage using other DJI drone products. Now what you might not know is that Lee Morris, the other half of F-Stoppers, is an incredible drone operator. And for most all of the drone footage, I've just relied on him taking it and I've actually flown the drone very few times. I've definitely taken some shots here or there, but I've always had Lee or maybe a Lyle Licardi looking over my shoulders to make sure I'm doing everything all right and I don't crash it. But by no means would I call myself a drone flyer, operator, enthusiast. I've kind of stayed away from this entirely, but with this new Avada 2, I think it's time for me to finally bite the bullet and learn how to use one of these. So all that being said, I can't really compare firsthand the Avada 1 to the Avada 2 because I've never used the Avada 1. Lee has done a review. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check that out. I just watched his review. It's got me really excited about using this drone, but I don't want it to influence me too much. If you're a drone enthusiast, you're probably going to watch this video and other videos that I make and think Patrick is <laughs> way in over his head and you would be totally right. Spoiler alert. But maybe you're like me and just getting into drones for the first time. The Avada series is supposed to be DJI's entry level drone. So this should be, in theory, the easiest drone to connect, operate, and kind of get you into this space. And so I'm gonna kind of relate these videos from that angle. But for this video, let's just jump into all the specs and talk about why this might be the perfect drone for you. Let's first talk about the weight. The Avada 1 was weighing in at 405 grams, where this new one is 377 grams. So just a little bit lighter with the battery. The sensor is also a little bit larger. The Avada 1 had a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor. This one now has a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor. If I did my math correct, that's about a 24% increase on in the sensor size, which theoretically should improve the image quality and maybe even the low light performance. According to the spec sheet, both sensors are 48 megapixels effectively. If you're like me and you want to use this perhaps as a still camera, you're only going to be able to shoot at 12 megapixels both on the version 1 and the version 2, and they've limited this to just JPEG, so there's no RAW format at all. Both drones have exactly the same field of view at 155 degrees, which is about 12 millimeters if you're converting that to a standard format. Now the max bit rate's kind of interesting. You were able to get 150 megabits per second on the older Avada. On this one, it's actually dropped to 130 megabits per second. So I think that's a really high megabit rate. Usually for YouTube, I'm exporting much lower, but 
It is kind of strange that it's a step backwards on the new drone. The ISO seems to be exactly the same at 100 at the low end to 25,600 on the high end. Color space has changed slightly. You have a normal color space on both drones, but on the new one, they've changed from the Cine-like, d -Cine like to D-Log-M. From what I've read online, these are almost identical, so I think it's just a difference in naming. Resolution is a slight difference. You're now able to shoot 30 frames per second. From the spec sheet of the older drone, you could only shoot at 50 or 60 frames per second. They had no 30 frames per second option, so that is a difference too. Internal memory is a big one. The version two now has 46 gigs of memory built in, whereas the older Avada one just had 20 gigs. So if you're like me and you like having that redundancy, or if you're like me and you sometimes leave the house without the micro SD card, 46 gigs is a huge improvement. And now let's talk about overall flight time. According to the specs, this can now fly at 23 minutes versus the 19 minutes on the Avada 1. Keep in mind, these are kind of skewed because they are running the drone without using the camera at all. So 23 minutes is going to be the absolute max longest time that you have this thing take off and then run it to zero where it comes crashing down and you shoot no video. So more realistically, I think these are probably gonna fly for like 15 minutes max if you're shooting video. Now in terms of flight speed, these actually perform exactly the same, at least on paper. On the lower normal speed, they fly at eight meters per second. If you go to manual mode so that you can fly as fast as possible, they're clocking in at 27 meters per second. If you go to sports mode, it seems like they've just kind of changed where the level is on that. On the older drone, you were looking at 14 meters per second. On the new drone, it's at 16 meters per second. But if we look at the slowest speed versus the highest speed, they're exactly the same. Max distance that this thing can fly, you can now go 13 kilometers away from where you're located. On the older drone, I think it was like 11.6. So you can get a little bit more distance out of the Avada 2. So that's the drone. Let's now talk about the Goggles 2 versus the brand new Goggles 3. When it comes to weight, the Goggles 3 are about 30% heavier than the older ones, so definitely take that into consideration. I think the biggest upgrade between the Goggles 2 and the Goggles 3 is that the Goggles 3 now have two 1080 sensors versus the one 1080 sensor. So when you're looking through this, each eye is able to see its own screen that kind of blends together. I haven't used the old goggles, but I assume that this is going to be a much more pleasant viewing experience. The battery life now is three hours versus two hours. Again, with these things only flying for 15 to 20 minutes on a single battery, you're gonna need a lot of batteries before the goggles ever die, but three hours, that's a pretty good amount of time. Another really cool thing that the Goggles 3 does is this has picture in picture so that you can see all of your ambient surroundings with the flight control just up in the corner. That's gonna be really nice if you are trying to keep an eye on what's around you. Having used that just briefly here, I feel like the quality is really bad and the, the focal length seems really tight. So maybe I can change that, but when I look at my spatial awareness, it's like I'm looking through a 50 millimeter lens where I want it also a little bit wider. So maybe that's a setting I can change here, but I'll have to dive a little bit deeper into the menu. Another really cool thing about the Goggles 3 that I think warrants an upgrade is you can now use Wi-Fi to connect it to your phone and you can hand your phone off to somebody else for viewing. So if you just have a friend that's tagging along or maybe you're actually filming some kind of content, you can have somebody preview it on the side, confirm that the shot that you got looks great, also kind of keep an eye out for you. I think that's a really cool feature. Transmission distance is also improved on the Goggles 3. You can now go to 13 kilometers away where the old ones were just 10 kilometers. And it seems like they've improved the buffering and the latency so that the image quality coming off the drone to the goggles is going to be increased through much of that distance. The transmission bit rate between the two of them has been upped from 50 megabits per second to now 60 megabits per second. So it should look a little bit sharper and cleaner. And the live view frames per second between the two of these has been upped from 60 frames per second in the highest quality to now 100 frames per second when viewing through the goggles. So looking at everything on the specs, you know, obviously the sensor is a little bit better, so the image quality should be nicer. Um, the big thing just seems to be the goggles. I mean, these are gonna retail for $500. So if you have the older DJI goggles too, it feels like these are going to give you better image quality. They have new features and overall should just last longer with the battery life and the transmission. So I don't know how that totally relates if you just buy new goggles and use them on the old Avada 2 or if you have the older goggles and you use them with the Avada 3. But it does feel like the goggles have had the biggest upgrade, at least on the spec sheets. 
So there you go, there's my top level overview of the differences between the Avada 2 and the Avada 1, and then also doing a first look on the brand new Goggles 3. I'm gonna try to produce another video about this system because in using this today and trying to get everything to link up and just work, I have found that this is actually very, very complicated and kind of annoying from a first time drone user. I don't know if it's because this was just released today and there's still bugs in the firmware and in the software, and maybe that's just to be expected on the very first day of getting a product. But I'm gonna do another video where I kind of show you some of my frustrations and also show you the flight that I just did 30 minutes ago. And hopefully I'll get to fly this some more and actually get some great footage because at this moment, I do not feel comfortable flying at 300 feet above the ground. And I definitely don't feel comfortable flying through obstacles and five feet off the ground and around trees and bodies of water. That is giving me anxiety. So I definitely have some work to do before I release that video. But um, I thought this video would be kind of useful just because this product is brand new and many of you are probably trying to compare the two. If you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel below and I will see you guys very soon. <laughs>